For over a month, the islanders have had no contact with family or friends. Hello, Jordan. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> oh, my God, I knew I was going to start crying. <laughs> After a long and emotional day, my team has a message for the Islanders. Zero, you're speaking to Ben Cooper. No. This is your last night. Tomorrow morning, Bear will arrive to take you off the island. Woo! Oh my god! We are leaving this island tomorrow it is amazing we made it you guys yeah, yeah. we have totally this is done last, it that's it last oh, night oh my word oh, i'm not going to be able to go to sleep done it guys we've done it man so can't quite believe it no. they're not really going to come and pick us up tomorrow <laughs> This is the last evening. For me, this island, there'll always be a piece of it in my heart. Me and Cags have made a poem for you all. Mm. And it's called The Invasion. Ooh. Ooh. 16 Belens arrive on my island, thinking they could conquer me. The young and the old with just the clothes on their backs here for five weeks, apparently. The OAPs rescued the kids. <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, God. <laughs> and both camps decided to merge. Long before not, within their temp camp, arguments started to surge. You don't do anything, you're fucking self! So why do you always get upset when somebody else has a thousand opinion? You're a proper tosser. Their camp became a swamp, the trench foot set in, and all they had was their shit shelter. This is impossible, bud. What a bitch of an island. A young boy left, another was voted off. Fuck off, Phil. It was music to my ears. I brewed up the biggest storm there has been in many years. I'm absolutely soaked through to the boat. Requesting exit from the island en masse. I began to feel sorry for these idiots after all my tantrum and tears. So I moved my clouds and put on a smile, taking away all of their fears. Machete it. You beauty! Yeah! I gave them my troublesome turkeys, celebration the Cayman too. <laughs> I like to think it was a peace offering from me, the island, to you. <laughs> 13 people remain, and lots of tears and laughter. Thanks for the visit. I hope you all live happily ever after. Oh. Well done, girls. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm on my way to pick up the remaining castaways and really this has been the most brutal conditions any of the island survivors have ever had to encounter. I have no idea what state they're going to be in, both physically but also mentally. This will have taken its toll. The survivors, but wow, they look, they're moving slowly. You know, they're tired, dirty, as to be expected, <laughs> but happy. Hey, no! Hey! 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 Wow. Hey! Yeah! Well done, you guys. <laughs> wow, look at you. I know you're going to be dirty. I know you're going to stink. <laughs> but you know what? There's a, wow, look, there's a light in your eyes. That, You've had to earn the hard way. You know, I know what you guys have been through. It's been a, the worst weather we've ever seen. Respect. Ultimately, you're there at the end. You're a hero. Amazing, really, genuine. Thank you.
Well, How are you feeling? It feels like I've been slapped every day, brutally, about the face. Oh. And up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. OK, last thing, put out the fire. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Thank oh. you, fire. Yeah. yeah. Right, guys, quick get round. This can't down tree. So here we go, the last one. We've done it together. We're all for one and one for all, yeah? Yeah! Woo! Let's get the out of here! Yeah! Ultimately, the rewards in life and certainly in survival go to the dogged, the determined, those who can hang on in there to endure days of tropical storms and that hurricane. They've done it, they've reached the end, smiling, proud. We are going home. Oh, my God! Oh. Come on, Frankie boy! We're going home! Come on, Ireland! Oh, oh. oh my God! so difficult to describe the whole experience. It's been like the worst, the best and worst experience of my life. The islands taught me it doesn't matter how hard things get, you never quit. To move on in life and say, like, oh, I've done that. It's a massive sense of achievement. Yeah, oh, I'll remember this for the rest of my life. I've caught a fish. I killed a turkey. I helped capture a caiman. I built a shelter. I've achieved something that I've never done or never probably will do again. After 35 days, the islanders have finally reached civilization. <laughs> and waiting for them is fellow castaway Karen. Mumsy, you in For over a month, the islanders have had no contact with family or friends. Hello, Jordan. <laughs> Hi, Mum. <laughs> oh, my God, I knew I was going to start crying. <laughs> oh. Phil? How are you? Oh, God. I have missed you so much. I love you, so much. It's too long. <laughs> love you, sir. I think it's easy to categorise people that if you're older, you're going to be wiser, and if you're younger, you're going to have more energy. But you can have wise young people, and you can have incredibly energetic, determined older people. Wisdom, experience, energy and vigour, all of those are key ingredients for a great survivor. Oh, Jesus! It's been a while. This is just like, each mouthful is orgasmic. Oh, oh, it's just the taste. This is like an explosion in your mouth. Amazing, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> we like to think of great survivors of being like Rambo, and it's all about their muscles and their sharp machete. But it's not. It's about the relationships, the bonds you create with people, being kind in the big moments, going the extra mile for people. Truth is, they've done it by heart, grit and determination together. For the men's arrival, a special welcoming party awaited. OK, come on, then, give us, uh, give us your highs and lows. Literally just to get to the end and finally be watching the sun rise on what will be my last day on the island. That was just overwhelming. We got past strangers, we got past friends, and we became family. You really do feel like you can conquer anything when you're all together. When we're going back home, 
what is there to stop us. Nothing else can really stand in our way. You know, you've got light in your eyes and, and it's in all of you. And you only get that glint when you go through the mill, come out the other side of it. Guys, I think you're amazing. Yeah. It's time to get you off this island. Yeah. 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 Let's go, boys. Yeah. yeah! So Bear dropped us off on this island, and it's just a random island. Bear then come back, and he was picking me up off our island. And it was, it was such a strange sensation. And I think quite a lot of the other lads felt like that as well. Like that, and that was our ground now. Ha, ha, ha! boys! Returning to civilization was weird. We spent a lot of the time wishing for that day to come and dreaming about it and being like, when that boat turns up, it's going to be amazing. Oh, we did it, guys! But then the reality was I wasn't ready. I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay in this with these amazing women and living in this amazing experience. Well done, boys! Uh, oh. Well done. Let's grab his tackle and get out of here, yeah? Knowing that the time was up and that this great, great, great adventure we're on is coming to an end, that was really sad, that, yeah. I'm so heartened to arrive here and actually see real, genuine love, care and community. And they don't look emaciated and broken. They look actually healthy and smiling and proud. And pride is something that is hard won. And they've done it the hard way. Oh, the relief. Absolute relief. Just to know that we were finally going to get back to reality where we can fill our bellies. It was just, yeah, amazing. OK, ladies, welcome back to Civilization. You done it, you done it. <laughs> oh, it's like so happy. <laughs> For the men's arrival, a special welcoming party awaited. In they come. In the form of injured cameraman Will. There's William. I could see all their faces on the side of the boat, and I kind of give, give a little wave. And they all kind of like cheered and jumped out and came running over. It's quite, you see, it's giving me goosebumps now to think of it. Saying, wow, you all stink! <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, it was really good to kind of get the team back together. After spending six weeks cut off from the world, oh, it's so weird to touch. <laughs> Reacclimatizing was going to take time. <laughs> it feels. I'm going to need to. Train myself. I can't remember how to work it. I knew this was going to happen. I've forgotten how to work. It feels so weird. It looks weird. Oh, that first phone call. <sighs> I was really looking forward to it, but not the emotional roller coaster that I knew were going to come. I mean, purely speaking to my missus just pushed me over the edge. Never, never been like that in my life that I can remember other than being a kid sobbing over bugger all. Oh, God, your voice is beautiful. <gasps> A bit of squeeze on the phone, it was lovely. It was really nice. <laughs> Hello, baby. I'm so happy to talk to you. I cannot tell you. Oh, it's so good to hear your voice. It was so strange and weird and intense, and I really loved it. I really loved it. I didn't realise that when I spoke to my mum and heard her voice, just how powerful that was. I wasn't upset, I was just so happy. I've never been so happy. My mum's pissed me off since being back. She's annoying, but, you know, I'm not going to try and forget that, that moment with the phone call, because actually you realise that she's not annoying. She's, she's the best. <laughs> Hello. Hello! Hearing my daughter's voice after six weeks was just beautiful. Oh, baby, I miss you so much! And kind of made me realise what, what I have, how rich my kind of life at home is. Truth is, you cannot go on this island, endure and leave the island the same person. It is a life-transforming experience. The island's taught me it doesn't matter how hard things get, you never quit. To move on in life and say, like, oh, I've done that. It's a massive sense of achievement. Yeah, oh, I'll remember this for the rest of my life. 
Who's coming? So they're the survivors. But wow, they look. They're moving slowly. You know, they're tired, dirty, as to be expected, <laughs> but happy. Well done, you guys. <laughs> wow, look at you. I know you're going to be dirty. I know you're going to stink. But you know what? There's a, wow, look, there's a light in your eyes that you've had to earn the hard way. You know, I know what you guys have been through. It's been a, the worst weather we've ever seen. Respect. Ultimately, you're there at the end. You're a hero. Amazing, really, genuine. Thank you. Well, How are you feeling? It feels like I've been slapped every day. Brutally about the face and up the arse. <laughs> oh. Okay, last thing, put out the fire. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Thank you, fire. Yeah. Right, guys, quick get round. This can't down tree. So here we go, the last one. We've done it together. We're all for one and one for all, yeah? Yeah. Ultimately, the rewards in life, and certainly in survival, go to the dogged, the determined, those who can hang on in there to endure days of tropical storms and that hurricane. As they've done it, they've reached the end, smiling, proud. We are going home. Oh, my God! Oh. Come on, Frankie boy! We're going home! Come on, Ireland! Oh. So difficult to describe the whole experience. It's been like the worst, the best and worst experience of my life. The islands taught me it doesn't matter how hard things get, you never quit. To move on in life and say like, oh, I've done that. It's a massive sense of achievement. Yeah, I'll remember this for the rest of my life. I've caught a fish. I killed a turkey. I helped capture a caiman. I built a shelter. I've achieved something that I've never done or never probably will do again. After 35 days, the islanders have finally reached civilization. <laughs> and waiting for them is fellow castaway Karen. For over a month, the islanders have had no contact with family or friends. Hello, Jordan. <laughs> Hi, Mum. <laughs> oh, my God, I knew I was going to start crying. <laughs> oh. Phil? How are you? Oh, God. I have missed you so much. I love you, Phil. I love you, Phil. Fucking hell, I love you, Phil. I think it's easy to categorise people that if you're older, you're going to be wiser, and if you're younger, you're going to have more energy. But you can have wise young people, and you can have incredibly energetic, determined older people. Wisdom, experience, energy and vigour, all of those are key ingredients for a great survivor. Oh, Jesus. It's been a while. This is just like, each mouthful is orgasmic. Oh, it's just the taste. It's just this is like an explosion in your mouth. It's fucking amazing, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> we like
like to think of great survivors as being like Rambo, and it's all about their muscles and their sharp machete. But it's not. It's about the relationships, the bonds you create with people, being kind in the big moments, going the extra mile for people. Truth is, they've done it by heart, grit, and determination together. So you haven't seen a clear distinction with old, old and young. Five weeks in survival mode must have affected their memories, because the generational gap was a constant source of conflict. <laughs> Once the groups met, so the people. Oh my God! they decided to face a challenge together. You can see the youngsters, we'd rescued them. Frank did not rescue us. It's so frustrating. But he still maintains that now. He's a dickhead, isn't he? Do you think, therefore, if you bring older and younger people together, there's a sort of collective, you know, it's, it's stronger and better? I don't think age has come into this. It's down to the individual. Oh, I just think it's just everyone's just different and they all come together. It's a community. So you haven't seen a clear distinction with old, old and young? No. Five weeks in survival mode must have affected their memories because the generational gap was a constant source of conflict. Hi! Hi, you lot! You lot not older. Come on, craft. Ah. <laughs> The older ones thought that the younger ones were lazier. I feel like I'm at f***ing school. I don't think they were, I just think... Um, yeah, they were. They were bloody lazy. Can the young one come down here, please, and give us a lift for this timber? It's too f***ing big for a pensioner. What was all the shouting about? And that's for a lift and nobody moves the f ass. ass. I don't know why you're telling us to f*** off and about we're lazy little f I had loads of hours with Frank, loads of hours. Because you ain't going to tell me what to do, sort of thing. I know what I'm doing, I'm 30 years of eight, well, nearly 30. They haven't got that need, that urge. You know, yeah. they're mummy's little soldiers, mummy's yeah. little princesses. Oh, yeah. When you're younger, you start something and then something else takes your attention. Not anything malicious or horrible or anything like that. You just get bored. If I'm bored of something, I cannot stay interested and I can't keep doing it. But I wouldn't say it's just age, it was just... Coincidentally, <laughs> it was all the young people. Whilst the eldest islander, Frank, was one of the strongest, it was no surprise to many of the group that their youngest member was the first to throw in the towel. So losing Freddy, that was hard. I think he was looking for an excuse to go for quite a long yeah, time. Yeah, he wanted to go. I, I could see that Freddy was bewildered by the whole experience. And I, I said, you can be my apprentice. I, th I thought that'd be good for him. But then he just didn't have the, the wants, the eager wants to do what he was doing. Wilfred, why aren't you chopping wood now then? Because I've got a headache and I'm turning a bit of water because oh, I'm tired. Oh, boy. I don't think that's embarrassing because I'm honestly doing my best here. I mean, this is a massive challenge for me. I'm 18. He's a lovely boy, very polite, very well mannered, lovely boy, but he's about 12. I've never been so tired in my life. Everything was like blurring. You know when you get all these like, 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 like little stars in your eyes? I just had that and I was so out of it. I just remember sitting there and like falling asleep. After two and a half weeks, Freddie had reached breaking point. I have thought about everything and I, almost, I, want, I want to go, I think. Oh, it's a hard one with Freddie leaving because I just heard so many excuses. Hi, right, Frank. Hey, <laughs> That's it. Drag him on, that's it. I, mean, I was in hospital for four days when I got back on a drip. I don't... I don't know. I don't think I could have carried on, personally. So what was your main source of food? Fish. Yeah. Fish, really. Fish and yucca. yucca. Fish and yucca. Coconuts. Toasted now as well. Just a little bit of a difference. Yeah, toasted coconut's good. It's amazing how many different ways you can work out how to cook a yucca <laughs> and a coconut. What the f*** is that? In our camp. Food was very thin on the ground, but when they pulled their respective talents, Thank you. Well spotted. young and old made a formidable team. So I make a noose, a big pole, three metres long, with a bit of cord on the end, and make it on a slip knot. And I thought, if I can get that over its head or any part of its body, I've cracked it. I pull it down and I've got it round his neck. I said, we're dirty with Frank. 
Just cast it out. I've just sort of knew hermit crabs were the best bait. It looks like appetising to the fish. You can tell a fish, you think like a fish. Together, they caught a richer, more diverse diet than any islanders before them. We cooked in a little bit of sea salt as well, sea water. So it should have a nice bit of taste in it. We were grilling on the, uh, a liner off an old fridge, which is a piece of aluminium sheet which we'd found on the beach and we'd scraped all the polyurethane off it, scrubbed it with sand, and then we were using that as a frying pan. Within a day, Ruby was already struggling to adapt to island life. Ruby, um, would you like to be drinking water? No, oh, thanks. Oh, Ruby, no, 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 you'll damage yourself. I don't like it. I kind of reawoke the whole competitive spirit in me. I want it to be part of that. You know, that little adventure of, of tearing down those parachutes. You're excited, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> Looking back on it was by far the most sensible thing to do because it's more fun if there's a little bit of shenanigans going on. Holy fuck. Wow. There's a box. Not as enough. No, just kidding. Uh, Fucking uh, dickhead. <laughs> and after all, it is a game, isn't it? He's a league of his own. I can't compete with that guy. He's been six years in the Marines. I'm just seven years in the NHS. Not everyone's strategy was to keep the money they found for themselves. Some of the islanders wanted to share it. In particular, Marco's athletic rival, plumber Jack. The main reason I wanted to get the money, I think it was pride. Getting in. Getting in. I'm very competitive. I love Ben to bits, but I probably had the worst person that I could ask for in the boat with me. Ben was rowing the wrong way. Ben, you're going back to shore the other way, mate. <laughs> Marco's not, not stronger and not, not fitter than me in any way. Come on, let's go, Ben. If you don't want to play a game, let's play. Woo! Well, I'm not getting any. Of course you're not getting any. Come on! So, Marco, do you have any regrets how it's worked out, the money side of it? But I came here with two different mindsets. One was towards the money and one was towards the group and the survival. If people wanted more money, they were welcome to go out on their own or in groups and do as they pleased. Well, you were very lucky. You had the choice to be able to go out and do that. Yeah. Right from the start, that wasn't going to happen with Morgan and I. We didn't feel good about it, but it was a physical age thing. It wasn't because we didn't want to do it. We were unable to do it. Get in! They found some money! Well, how much? Fifteen. Fifteen? Oh, my God. Well done! When they came back into the camp, having found money, if they said that they'd found money, the enthusiasm and the feel that pleasure and excitement was great. I wanted to feel that. I thought I was going to have nothing. I'd have gone into their bag and stole a couple of thousand of each because I wasn't getting money. And it was a game. I kept saying to Morgan, it's a game. I'll steal. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> I would have stole it. I honest to God would have done that. Irene is a dark horse, I'm telling you. If, she, if Irene was my age, you know, she probably would have been more, you know, cutthroat than I was. Um, yeah, she would have ripped that place apart, no doubt. I wish they'd known it was in their bags. They must have left these bags in camp and I'd be in camp. I was so near it and didn't get it. But on the island, there was one thing more valuable than money. And do you remember your first taste of island water? Yes. Oh, what was it, Marco? He said it was like a cold wheat tea, wasn't it? But we knew we'd survive then. By that stage, you're, you're thirsty anyway. Yeah. This is like beautiful nectar yeah. to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have a little sip? Yeah. By all means. Yeah, I have a drink. Well, survival water is not going to taste good, <laughs> is it? Yeah. But one of the joys for you guys when you get back to civilization is just how good that tap is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think I'll ever buy bottled water again. Oh, that's disgusting. 
I absolutely disagree. I think I'd rather not drink. God. Even with the threat of dehydration, one islander couldn't bring herself to drink the survival water. I mean, did you, I've never had to drink brown coloured water in my life. And it just tastes like soil. I think I expected like this camping trip and I've, I've never been camping, but it was nothing like that. <laughs> I'm seriously wondering why I've decided to go on this show. She's already said, what the fuck am I doing? Seriously, with those fingernails? Yeah, a bit gross now, but it's my little bit of sass. It literally took minutes into it, and I thought, wow, you know, I, d I don't know what I've come to. Within a day, Ruby was already struggling to adapt to island life. Ruby, um, would you like me drinking water? No, thanks. Oh, Ruby, no, 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 you'll damage yourself. I don't like it. I hated it, but I got used to it. I know, but I can't drink it. It's a million times, billion times harder than you could have ever imagined. It's horrendous. Ruby to zero, over. On day five, Ruby called my safety team and quit the island. Ready? You sure? This is literally like running a marathon and giving up after a couple of miles and going, oh, I can't do it. I think I should have at least spent a night in garden or something because I weren't ready for it. She enjoyed the idea of this um, experiment, but the reality of it's completely different. I'm upset I let myself down because I've never quitted on anything before. Even in little things in life, I've never quit on it. I've always seen it through. So I'll never regret going on there but bloody hell was it difficult. What would you say has been your one key skill in being such an effective hunter? It's just, I never gave up. You were opportunistic, you know, you wouldn't sort of wait for it all to happen and to be perfect. You'd, you'd sniff an opportunity and you'd go for it and do it. Well done. Thank you, thank you. This year, £100,000 was dropped at various locations around the island. As a result, the group covered more ground than ever before. I'd be out there trying to kind of find the money, because in finding money, you found things. I wanted to get everything from this island I possibly could, and I found vomit fruit. Did you even find pineapple? Yes, we have no <laughs> bananas. How are my pineapples? I think we counted as 21 different, like, sources of food, whether it be from a jobo berry to oysters, like lobster, like, even sugar cane, which, can I just say, is amazing. Stingray would definitely leave that if that was on a menu again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be putting that in my mouth. Limpets are nice. Winkles are a little bit, are a little bit shitty. Just like a slug in your mouth. When it came to food, it was 24-year-old plumber Jack who proved himself to be the ultimate survivalist. So I'd wake up in the morning, grumpy, hungry, and I'd think, what am I going to kill? What am I getting for dinner today? Ah! If it walked, swam, flew, talked, squawked, he killed it. Oh, my God! It's a fucking fish! <laughs> we wouldn't be going out to get food, but he'd just, you know, spot something, grab it by the neck, and it would be dead within five minutes, and you wouldn't even blink. If there was a stingray, woof, he was there. If there was a bird, whoa, there with a rock. You know, he was quick, nimble. Talk me through what you killed. About four iguanas. <laughs> Five birds, two stingrays, four fish, no, goat. Just wanted to bring it back and give it out and put a smile on everyone's faces. Jack is one of these people that he's just giving, 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 giving. Suck them out, suck them out. Put it into your mouth, the whole thing. Yeah. Put it to your mouth and suck it out. He genuinely just loves everyone. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> He's just pure innocence. What would you say has been your one?
key skill in being such an effective hunter? It's just, I never gave up. You were opportunistic, you know, you wouldn't sort of wait for it all to happen and to be perfect. You'd, you'd sniff an opportunity and you'd go for it and do it. Well done. Thank you, thank you. Ivor's underpants, how revolting, look at that. Ew. Quickly adapting to your environment is a key part of any survival situation. Funky smell around this camp, isn't it? And not much is more important than maintaining good personal hygiene. The hygiene on the island was disgusting. Look down, you're filthy. I loved it. God, those were the days. Yep, thanks. But there was an additional issue for the female islanders. I could get cranky. Jesus. Well, you've already been cranky sometimes. Yeah, well, I've been on my period. I've been on my period. Yeah, well, right, we'll let you off. I just felt so dirty. I felt like a dirty woman, and I could not do anything about it. I have a right to complain right now because not only is it uncomfortable, it makes me bloated, sluggish, fatigued. I I just feel like I'm a victim here, and I need everyone to know it. You decide to go cli like climbing through the jungle, and then you've just got these like stomach cramp. That was not a good part of it. Like, being female is actually super difficult, can I just say. When it came to skincare, one islander used their ingenuity and tried to be resourceful. We didn't have a lot on the island, but we did have the bare minerals, including tampons. So I would dip it in my water bottle, and then what I would do was just go over the face, just to get, oh, just to get that first layer of grime off, but what I didn't know was that it was also stripping away natural oils that were protecting my skin from the sun. And as I'm going over, I can feel bits flaking, so with that, I'm sitting there and I'm feeling like, oh, it's like a scab and like an itch you can't help. My skin, my poor, poor skin. I was so concerned about her picking her face, yeah? I've been telling her off every day, going, stop picking your face, you know? You, you're bleeding now, like your lip is split.